The water feminine rules over this ability to call forth souls. Every time a woman becomes pregnant, she is calling forth a soul. She is opening the portal to a soul to come through her. This is why in American indigenous cultures, the lineage is passed down through the mother because spiritually, the mother is, is calling forth her soul kindred, someone that she is basically intentionally calling forth. This idea that a lot of people have about like, oh, children didn't ask to be here. That's a false premise because the mother is making a connection with that soul. She's basically, it's, it's an invitation to come through. And let me tell you something, like a lot of souls want to come to earth. There's not a lot of souls that don't want to come to earth. Some don't, some have other things that they want to do, but a lot of souls want to come to earth. It's almost like the golden ticket when you get the chance or when you're being invited to come to earth and experience earth. Peace and prosperity. This is Asaya, and welcome back to Earth's Feminine. And if you're new here, welcome. This is the channel where you can come and learn all about primal feminine energy, the feminine energy that existed pre colonization and all of the conditioning around what we believe it means to be a woman. So if you're interested in learning more about things like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. In today's video, I want to talk with you all today about the power and the magic of being a woman. I've talked about before on this channel how the energetics of being a woman, and even in my intro, how the energetics of being a woman has been forgotten. What we believe about ourselves has been minimized because the spirituality of who we are is no longer respected, admired, uplifted. And I've talked about how this has happened within the context of religion in another video that I did, how and why powerful women are demonized by religion. And in my, a lot of my other videos, I've talked about how emotions are not valued, feelings are not valued. And because we have decided to run away from these things for so long, now in this day and age, you know, there is a rise and people wanting to, to connect more to their emotions and wanting to um, be in that energy. But even, even then, it's like it's an immaturity that a lot of people have when they're coming into back into this emotional realm. And now it's something that we really need to understand that emotional intelligence is a skill. And being in touch with the power of being a woman has to do with not only that emotional intelligence but the cosmic forces that are intertwined with that energy okay emotions is simply energy and i know y'all have probably heard this before but energy in motion is emotions that's literally all emotions is, is our energy moving in certain directions, channeling in certain ways. And when we understand the energy behind the emotions and how to channel that specifically, that's where the power of being a woman, I feel is magnetized. So I remember I was asking a friend one time while I was just thinking to myself like about life and the world. And I remember thinking about the, the energetic makeup of emotions and how when we're feeling something physically, typically there's a sensation, right? Like 
if I'm touching the wall, I feel this roughness or this these bumps or, you know, there's a sensation that goes through my hands that I can interpret this energy with. That'll let me know what I'm dealing with, what I'm working with, what what this is. So physically, we, we have these feelings and sensations that we can interpret. But our soul also, which is an aspect of the feminine, when we have these emotions, also feels. So when our soul is moving through life, we meet things, we meet experiences, we meet people. And all of these things have an energetic signature with that come along with them. All of these things have a, a soul to them, a spirit to them. And so when we meet with these things, we feel them. And I remember thinking to myself while I was, ta while I was with my friend and asking out loud, I was like, so when we feel things physically, right? we're feeling them, we're interpreting them, we're absorbing them, but on a soul level, when we're feeling things and we're meeting with people, experiences and all these things, what is it that we're touching? What is it that we're coming into contact with? What is it that, what is that essence? Just like physically when we're meeting this thing, we're like, yeah, this is a wall. What is that essence of when we're meeting things energetically? And this is where my friend was like, that's a good question. <laughs> I do not know. I don't know the answer to that. And I always remember that question because I feel like it was the basis for a lot of what I continue to discover over time. So I recently, okay, um, and stay with me because this has to do with what I'm talking about. I recently ordered a copy of my book that I published years ago called The Great Woman Resurrected. And I, y'all don't, don't judge me, but I never ordered physical copies of my book. All I did was I wrote the book digitally. I uploaded it and immediately had it to go out to print on demand through Amazon. So I never actually had any physical copies. I saw a bunch of other people purchase a book and have the physical copy, but I never had my own. So I realized that, okay, how do I not have a copy of my own book? That's crazy. So I, I got a copy of my book to show myself how much I appreciate my work and how valuable of the things that I have to share that is inside of this book. I also had a subscriber on my channel purchase my book and actually share with me that she got the book. And that really, um, shout out to you if you're watching this video, uh, that really inspired me to just like, come on girl, get the book and start talking about some of the things that are in here because um, it's powerful. So discovering the power of being a woman and really understanding these things that we're feeling emotionally and energetically i have broken down into in my book so there's a chapter in my book called the four primordial houses of the earth and in my book i go into these four primordial houses of the earth but also the elemental feminine archetypes that are related to each primordial house of the earth. So if you want to learn and do a deep dive into these four primordial houses, I definitely recommend that you purchase the book. The link is down below in the description. Um, I want to talk about these elemental feminine archetypes because this is what I have connected back to the thing, that emotional thing that women have a connection to really being able to embrace. So the first house is relative to the air feminine, okay? And the air, the air feminine's elemental archetype is, if I could relate it 
back to the traditional feminine archetypes, I would relate this elemental archetype to the archetype of the sage because this woman is naturally inclined, right? This woman who has this um, elemental power is inclined to talk a lot, <laughs> talk a lot, have a lot to say, and typically either she depending on how she's expressing this energy have a really easy time with her words and communication or a um a really rough time with her words and communication but essentially the power of the air feminine and this air elemental archetype brings to women the ability to free the mind body and soul through her power of words thought creating a direct line of communication to spirit and the universal forces of creation. So air is the element that allows us to sink up to the winds and the spirits of this world. It gives us freedom. It gives us awareness is a really great word here. Air brings us awareness and when the air feminine or woman who's in touch with her air elemental archetype is in her light work or in her light energy, she is very intentional through her forms of communication. She is very aware of her thought way, her thought patterns and her ways of speaking to people. Um, she uses her words intentionally to create realities and uses thoughts and words to enable freedom and ultimately break curses, all right? So this is very, very powerful because when a woman is in her shadow aspect of this elemental archetype, what we will see instead is the focus of thoughts and words on undesired events. Uh, we will see gossiping. We will see the liar, the deceiver, the storyteller, but using those words to really, to really manipulate and deceive, create this really, really dense cloud of energy. And a lot of times this is unknowing. So man or woman can be out of alignment with this power of the feminine because when you don't know how to use your words, when you don't understand the power of your words and the things that you say um, and the things that you think, you will limit yourself. You will um, blind yourself. You will be asleep and hypocritical in a lot of ways because the things that you say don't line up with with who you are the reality of who you are so to tap into this power and to stay in this power within the elemental the air elemental feminine remember how powerful your words are and that through the things that you think and the ways that you speak all all of life comes together and creates reality. I would say spiritually, right? It's almost like the spiritual realm will hear you. The spiritual realm will, will listen to those vibrations and it will clear the air for you. It will clear, um, it will clear your pathway, will clear the, the clouds and the fogs and the density and really bring you into a place of freedom spiritually and physically so whether you're dealing with the shadow aspect of these elemental feminine archetypes or the light aspect of them it's still a sign or a symbol that you have a basically um connection to this elemental feminine power so keep that in mind that it, if you are experiencing the shadow, that it's, it's a 
signal that this is something that you can develop. This is something that you can strengthen and be more intentional about. So the next elemental feminine archetype that I have in my book that I'm going to be sharing with you all is the water feminine, the power of the water feminine. And the water feminine has the ability to call and banish souls, beings from this earth plane. All right. So when I say call for souls, I mean, every time a woman becomes pregnant, she is calling forth a soul she is opening the portal to a soul to come through her and this is why in um, american indigenous cultures the lineage is passed down through the mother because spiritually the mother is is calling forth her soul kindred um and someone that she is basically intentionally calling forth right so this idea that a lot of people have about like oh children didn't ask to be here and you know nobody you decided to get pregnant and that child didn't ask to be here that's a false premise because the mother is making a connection with that soul and she's giving the soul she's basically it's it's an invitation to come through and let me tell you something that like a lot of souls want to come to earth there's not a lot of souls that don't want to come to earth some don't some have other things that they want to do but a lot of souls want to come to earth it's almost like the golden ticket when you get the chance or when you're being invited to come to earth and experience earth so that's a false premise where a lot of people kind of try to evade the power that they have and the intentionality that they had in coming here but in essence the water feminine rules over this ability to call forth souls so the light magic in this is being able to be very in sync with the moon communicating with souls that are coming through the moon right so basically having a very psychic connection to the souls that come through the moon this can be your womb this can be people in general right you know how to have a very deep soul connection with another person and you know how to honor these souls as a part of your tribe now the shadow in this so maybe you can understand the light better would be you know being very emotionally controlling controlling manipulative um but emotionally so whereas the air feminine was this um this irresponsibility with the way that they speak and the things that they think there is this um irresponsibility with the way that you are connecting emotionally and the emotions that you choose to have and this is where I think a lot of women can a lot of women right because we live on a sacred planet struggle or have struggled at some point with this but the um the light energy in this is having emotional um having that emotional awareness having that emotional dominance another shadow to this elemental archetype can be using abortion as birth control and basically not valuing the sacredness of her womb the sacredness of her life giving body so this can also be a woman who you know i, I go deep i go way deeper into the the lunar feminine and the moon the moon's energy and the earth's en energy specifically in this book um but in a nutshell, that is the power of the water feminine. So the previous elemental archetype of the water feminine, if I were to relate that back to the traditional feminine archetypes, I would relate her back to the mother, right? Just like the air feminine was related to the sage where there's this really high mental acuity and sharpness. 
the water feminine is very much so connected to this nurturing, loving, and supportive energy within feminine energy. The next elemental feminine archetype is going to be the solar feminine. So this is where we can find the creatrix, which I talk about so much. Um, I've even um, called myself, I have a, uh, an alternate name other than Asaya Mystic. I like to go by Asaya the creatrix because the creatrix has the ability to transform our ways of seeing life. So fire is all about light, the things that we're able to see. The sun brings light, okay? Without the sun, we would not be able to see anything. The colors, the textures, you know, we wouldn't be able to, and, and, when, um, and when the light changes colors, we see things in different ways, right? When the light changes or shifts, shifts in direction or whatever, we see things in different ways. In a different lighting, it's given off a different mood. It's given off a different vibe. So the solar feminine can transform our ways of seeing things. This is the woman that has a huge imagination. She can express all kinds of emotions and all kinds of energies. And she truly has the ability to transmute people from being you know low spirited or even ill right illnesses that are typically come from having a very low spirit a spiritual energy to all of this life and energy coming back into people into their lives so the light magic of the solar feminine is inspiration purification um life force renewal and the shadow side of the solar feminine can be anger hostility volatility naivety um no honor for life you know um and no patience so very impatient um types of energy so if you are experiencing this this can be transmuted into the light energy of, you know, say that you're impatient. Now, I know for me personally, I can be impatient. You know, I can be very impatient, but the only way that impatience becomes a bad thing or a shadow is if I am running over other people in the process of my impatience. I am dampening my quality of life because I'm so impatient. I need to hurry up, get in the car and go get to this destination. So much so that I'm not enjoying the experience. I'm not absorbing the, the wind blowing through my hair as, I, as I'm driving and you know, noticing all of the beautiful things that I see in my experience, in my life. It's almost like I'm missing out on the beauty and the vibrance of my world from being so impatient. So when that is the aspect of the impatience, because being very ready, I would say that's a better word, being ready and being impatient, two different things. Someone who's ready is spur of the moment, ready for life, right? And this is the woman that is in that healthy energy, is in that light expression of this. So that is, the solar feminine. This is the aspect of the power of this elemental feminine archetype. If I were to relate the solar feminine to one of the uh, modern feminine archetypes, it would be the huntress. Um, not so much because I don't really like that huntress archetype in the traditional feminine archetypes. But if I had to relate it to, to any feminine archetype, it would be the huntress, okay? Um, just because of that force, of that passion, of that readiness that the huntress carries is also something that the solar feminine or the creatrix energy carries. The last elemental archetype that I wanna go into is the earth feminine. So. 
this is the name of my channel this is what my channel is based off of is the earth's feminine energy and the earth feminine the earth's feminine elemental power is the ability to create energetic force fields and gateways of attraction your light magic is abundance fertility protection physical longevity and becoming a master of the laws of attraction and the laws of magnetism the shadow of the earth feminine is going to be heaviness a dense state of being this can manifest as obesity this can manifest as um like a culmination of energy that gets stuck so stagnancy um and becoming a, a slave to living life that isn't fun isn't isn't pleasurable okay so slave to effort a slave to working um a slave to being of service to something that does not bring you pleasure in your body and your in your soul so the earth feminine is and and if you find yourself in the shadow of this earth feminine the earth feminine energy the best way to balance this out is always going to be getting back to nature infusing yourself in natural environments and connecting with natural things a lot of what keeps women in the shadow energy of you know the earth feminine has a lot to do with her relationship to the water feminine which would be the moon so the earth and the moon have a very symbiotic relationship and for the solar feminine the way to balance out the solar feminine would be its relationship to air and vice versa so air and fire have a relationship that balances each other out and earth and water have a relationship that balances each other out and because air and fire um geared towards more of the masculine energetics of the planet i focus even more on how to really balance out and, and come into harmony with the earth feminine and the water feminine in my book so from these breakdowns of the elemental feminine archetypes this is what i have found is the basis of what we are meeting when we are feeling things at a soul level when we are experiencing life at a soul level this is what we are coming into contact with energetically we were coming into contact with the spiritual the spirituality of these elements that physically we would if we were to feel it right I'm feeling a combination of elements here physically when I feel the wall. I'm feeling a combination of elements here when I'm touching my book. Um, when I go swimming, when I drink water, physically I'm feeling a combination of the elements. Emotionally, I am doing the same thing. This is the breakdown of this emotional power that we as women have the ability to connect to. And I know that I said er, uh, fire and air are more so masculine elements, but this is what people need to understand about feminine energy is feminine energy is the basis for all of life, for all of creation. When we go beyond these basic four elements, there's actually one step further, which is the five elements. And that includes dark, matter dark energy light matter light energy and ether right so you have the duality of dark and light feminine energy and then you have ether okay and within this cosmic feminine energy you have the masculine energy that exists and is basically birthed within the feminine energy and this is why feminine energy is the most dominant energy of this planet. 
but it's also the energy that is responsible for the creation of everything so we cannot understand the nature of men we cannot understand masculinity if we do not first have a healthy relationship and a healthy honoring of feminine energy hell we can't respect and have a healthy understanding of anything or anyone if we don't have a healthy relationship and understanding of feminine energy so this is my breakdown of the elemental powers of being a woman being in your feminine energy make sure you go and purchase the great woman resurrected to get a deeper understanding of everything that i have just shared with you in this video and if you are ready to fully step into your earth feminine activation where we are going to be mastering every single element that i have described to you today on this video i am extending the invitation to you to be a part of the i am earth mistress mind so i just recently had the i am earth mistress class where we went over these four sacred areas of feminine energy but different okay it wasn't exactly these four elemental archetypes but uh we went into the state the sacred four foundation of connecting to the earth as a woman and if you want to watch the replay of that mistress class you can also go down below in the description box and sign up to get access for that and if you're interested in deep diving with me into your power your energetic power as a woman i am offering entry into the mistress mind from now until April 8th of 2024 for 50% off of the enrollment price. So yes, you will get half off of the enrollment into the I Am Earth Mistress Mind. If you are wanting to book a call with me and talk more about what the I Am Earth Mistress Mind would look like and get your own personal Earth Feminine activation, you can click the link down below in the description to book a call. Thank you all so much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the mistress mind and if not I will see you all in my next video. Peace.